Hi everyone, so uh, time for another video. Um, in this quick video, I just thought I'd actually go over um, what the benefits of Fortinet single sign-on are. Um, if you're just tuning into this video, there are a, a series of three other videos where um, I actually do something a little bit niche in that I get Fortinet single sign-on um, using the single sign-on mobility agent with a pure Azure Active Directory environment. Um, that's quite new. Um, a lot of organizations and companies that I'm working for or with at the moment um, are still using on-prem Active Directory. Um, so Fortinet single sign-on is, is specifically applicable to that as well. Um, but seeming as we've, we've already configured everything we need to do around Azure Active Directory, we will continue um, on that premises. But it, it, the same applies whether it's pure Azure AD or you tap into an on-prem um, Active Directory environment. So one of the questions that gets asked is, what does it actually do? Um, so Fortinet single sign-on essentially monitors users logging in and logging out of machines from a domain perspective. More importantly, it ties an IP address to, um, to a username or a domain. So if I show you a bad example, if you look at the logs that I'm looking at, um, at for my home environment. Um, yes, some of the appliances have names, but that's only purely because I've created address objects for them. But you've got no association with uh, an active, from an active directory perspective. So if you look at the logs and bearing in mind that this is just a home environment, but you might be looking at logs from tens of thousands of, of um IP addresses or sources to various destinations. When you're looking at it from a log perspective, it's not going to be very useful if all you've got is 10.88.88.16, which we all know could be issued out via DHCP and could be issued to another host. So this is one of the reasons why Fortinet single sign-on comes in, which I'll demonstrate now. So if you're now look, looking at it from another appliance, you can see that under 40 view sources, the username has been collected via the single sign on mobility agent and now appears accurately in the logs. Now, lots of organizations are using virtual desktop environments, that kind of thing where, you know, you've got um, lots of users logging in and logging out, hot desking, that kind of thing. You need to be able to keep track, in my opinion, of the username and the IP address that it's associated with. So that, in a nutshell, is what Fortinet single sign-on is, is gonna be able to offer from a log perspective. However, there are some other benefits, which we'll now go over. Just while we hit the middle point of the video, just a little bit of a cheeky plug. Um, there is 26 other videos on the channel. It really, really helps me if you can stay within my channel, jumping from one video to another. Created playlists to aid with that, so relevant topics that should, should flow from one video to another have been added as part of a playlist. Um, and if you haven't already, I'm just about to hit 600 subscribers in just over a month. So if you want to be uh, part of the, the movement, let's say, I'd really appreciate a subscription over to the video now. So if I show you the connector that I created between my ATF and 40 Authenticator, uh, it's done under security fabric, external connections, Fortinet single sign-on agent for Windows AD, um, collector agent, and you can see that I've got users and groups. If I click into users and groups, you can see that it's pulled the groups from Active Directory. So I've got engineering, HR people team, IT, marketing, operations. Now, the really important thing and the cool thing here 
is that these groups can be associated with security policies. So if I go into this rule here, that's got deep packet inspection enabled, but it's it's disabled and it's got various sources in there. If I take out those sources, just do an all, because you still do need to apply and address objects. But I go over to the user, you can see that I can apply these specific groups. So if I wanted to get a little bit granular and would say that the IT team um, can does not have web filtering enabled, but it has application and file filtering enabled, that's fine. And then I create a policy below it because obviously from a firewall perspective, it's first policy gets matched first. So you want your more specific at the top. I then say for my uh, HR, uh, engineering, marketing, and operations teams, same again, but you've got a very strict web filtering policy enabled and application control. Maybe you say they, could, they can't browse to gambling websites, they can't browse to news sites, they're not allowed Spotify, that kind of thing. This can all be done, but it can. the most important thing here is that it can be conducted on a very granular level. So you end up building out your policies that are tied into Active Directory. So as, as an employee joins, you have your Active Directory environment and you drop, you know, members or employees, I should say, that are in the marketing team into the marketing group and you drop the employees that are associated with IT into IT. And then what you've basically done is you've now extended that Active Directory capability to be able to apply it in firewall policy. Also, again, it's super important because gone are the days of you looking at your logs where you've just got IP addresses that could be, you know, potentially uh, assigned to one host one day and then assigned to another host another. You've actually got in your logs the username that was being a little bit naughty or was a threat. So then you can then go and have a conversation with that user to say, hey, up, mate, what have you been doing? Or why why was why your machine spoke spoken out to a command and control server or why have you had this file blocked or why was you browsing to a gambling website so it's just a massive improvement and it's highly recommended that you do do some sort of find a single sign on integration um just to cover it very quickly there's 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 a few different ways of doing it um the first way is that you can actually deploy Fortinet single sign-on agents. It's executable that gets installed on your domain controller. It looks at things like WMI within Windows, looks at the, the, the login and log, log out events that are going into that domain controller and basically packages them all up and sends them to the FortiGate firewall. It's, it does scale quite well. Um, but um, and you can deploy it on multiple domain controllers. Um, however, for the larger deployments, um, I actually prefer to leverage the single sign-on mobility agent now, which is comes as part of Forty Client. So, which I can show you now. So this can be done with or without Forty Client EMS. You go into your 40 client settings, advanced, enable single sign on mobility agent. You point it to your 40 authenticator. 8001 is the default port, and the pre shared key is defined within 40 authenticator. Again, if you browse through my previous videos as part of this playlist, you can see the full setup. Um, but that's basically going to collect the data about the Active Directory environment. It's, it's the, the, the host is joined to the domain and send it out on a per user basis, basis up to 40 Authenticator. In my opinion, it scales better 
and it isn't limited to CPU memory constraints where the executable collector that can go on the domain controller is. Uh, if you run in a hot environment, things can and will get missed. So moving forward, this is my preferred method um, for, for customers that have got 40 client installed on their machines. So just jumped over to my 40 authenticator before we wrap up the video. Um, just thought I'd call it out that from a 40 authenticator licensing perspective, single sign-on mobility is a licensed feature. You do need to buy X amount of single sign-on mobility agent licenses. Um, my authenticator isn't anything special, but you can see that I have a lot a hard limit of five which is going to be more than ample for uh, the videos that I'm creating, but just please be mindful of that. But to summarize, if you want to tie usernames and make your logs look pretty um, and, and not have uh, what could be an unuseful um, IP address, specifically in environments where DHCP is involved, then Fortinet single sign-on is the way to go. Um, and if you have a complex Active Directory environment where you've got you've got a really nice and tidy structure for each deployment, so HR, engineering, uh, operations team, you've got people starting, leaving, um, and you just want your fire you want to be able to filter your security firewall security policies based on. Uh, an active directory group which is a much more efficient way of doing it then this is definitely the way forward um, i do see lots of organizations that don't have active directory integration let's say and the logs are from a 40 analyzer perspective are pretty useless um, because ip addresses keep getting reassigned to different users uh, on a daily or a monthly basis so that wraps up this video um, if you are enjoying the content please subscribe to my channel and also if you do please let me know in the comments that you have subscribed that would be amazing see you in the next video